Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 30. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our idle control, but looking at it with a idle control solenoid that's pulse width modulated driven. In our last video, we reviewed how to tune our idle control with a stepper motor. So the two different types that we're going to be finding is a stepper and a pulse width modulated motor, and they will tune differently. I wanted to break up and have two different training modules here to go and distinguish between each so that if you're using a pulse width modulated style solenoid, you can watch this video. If you're using a stepper style idle control solenoid, you can watch the previous video. So without further wait, let's jump in to check out how we're gonna be tuning with a pulse width modulated idle control solenoid in our PC Link software. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our idle control within our PC Link software. Now in the last video, we explored how to integrate our idle control with an idle solenoid. The very first video, we looked at doing our basic idle control where we're just using our spark timing and allowing it to dynamically feedback so that the engine torque could be varied to achieve our desired idle RPM. In the last video, we took it a step further, utilized our spark timing feedback, and then introduced working with that idle control stepper motor. The stepper motor allows a certain amount of airflow into the engine. The airflow, as it's coming into the engine, will offset any kind of torque losses or torque production that the engine's going to have. So if we increase the airflow, we're going to be increasing the engine torque. If we decrease the airflow, we'll be decreasing the engine torque. So we found that we could work with both spark timing and varying the airflow into the engine to achieve whatever the desired engine idle RPM was going to be at. We looked at the open and closed loop style tuning formats for that stepper motor. We're going to be doing the exact same thing here in this video, covering a lot of the same key points, but we're going to be looking at controlling a pulse with modulated style idle control solenoid. So it's going to be a different type of solenoid to control and the programming is going to be slightly different. So I wanted to just do a dedicated video. Some of what we find in this video is going to be redundant from the last video, but we'll still go over thing, everything just the same. So if you have in the future, I want to come back into this video if you're looking at maybe tuning a stepper motor first and then you have another vehicle that's going to have a pulse width modulated style idle control solenoid, you can go into either video and learn the specifics about what that's going to be different for programming in either situation. So the very first thing we are going to do here is jump up to the top under idle speed control setup and we're going to go into mode and we're going to be turning this on. Now right now I'm going to be leaving out my idle ignition control. We'll turn that on in a little bit later in the video. We're going to have some options here off. That's going to be turning off the solenoid output completely. We're going to find we have open loop and closed loop. And we're going to be starting off in open loop. Even if you want to use closed loop in your idle control routine, you still want to start off in open loop so we can populate out our idle base position table. So let's click OK here and allow that table to come up here on our screen. Let's click yes and we can see now the table is populated. So the idle base position table is going to be almost the exact same thing as we found working with our stepper motor. So we're going to find it's based on coolant temperature here at the top and then the values in here are going to be 0 to 100. Now this is where the difference is going to be from our stepper motor to a pulse with modulated motor. In a stepper motor, we would have the total steps the stepper motor could take. So if we're dealing with something like a older GM LS application, it would have 310 steps. If we're dealing with something like a 4G63 engine, a Mitsubishi style idle control solenoid, they typically have 120 steps. We would have to specify the number of steps and the idle base position then would translate from a zero to 100% scale to the total steps that we would be working with. Now in the case of talking about a pulse with modulated style idle control solenoid, we're gonna be sending a duty cycle out to control that solenoid. This is the exact same way we would be controlling a boost solenoid. So 0% duty cycle would be closing off the idle control solenoid and not letting air, throw, air flow through it. If we're gonna be then turning it up to 100%, that's gonna be opening up the idle control solenoid the maximum amount, allowing the most amount of airflow to flow through it and achieving the highest idle speed possible. So we're gonna be working with these zero to 100% values within the table here but they're not going to translate to, to steps that was specific to the idle stepper motor. This is gonna be a, literally a translation between zero or closed and then 100 being all the way open and essentially moving that valve either more open or more closed within the control routine here in the table. So very basic. So the next thing we have to go and program here is our actuator type. Now here we have some options. We either have solenoid, stepper, e-throttle, or three-wire solenoid. So in this case, we're gonna be choosing solenoid Three-wire solenoid is another option that's still going to be programming the same as far as how we're going to be working with this. The stepper motor is unique. We covered that in the last video. And then e-throttle is going to be for our drive-by-wire throttle control. We're not going to be taking a look at that right now. We will have a dedicated video on drive-by-wire control. We'll come back in here to the idle control when we're looking and talking about the drive-by-wire because it does program differently. So I'm going to go here and just select solenoid. 
So that's going to be our pulse width modulated solenoids. So examples of engines that have a pulse width modulated solenoid would be a, almost any Honda engine. So if we're talking about a B, B series, H series, D series, C series, which is NSX, um, F series, S2000, K series, they're all going to have a, a pulse width modulated style idle control solenoid. So um, we'll find that's going to be the option here. So we'll be able to select solenoid and click OK. And now we're going to find that we have a couple other details here to populate. Now, the thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.